Hey everybody, it's Endymion, and in this video, I consider it a lot of good news because as you'll see, the collective efforts of the gaming community is successfully pushing back a lot of the nonsense that we've been fighting against for a while now. From Concord's fate being all but sealed to fade into oblivion and Dustborn's devs attacking everybody demanding that we buy and support them no matter what, and how governments are actually funding what are being called counter disinformation games. That last one is wild by the way and explains a good deal why these things keep happening, but first, Concord. This game has come out and died right out of the gate. I don't think I've seen such a big AAA release like this die this quickly since maybe Battleborn from Gearbox, remember that game? It flopped horribly, the servers got turned off, and now the game, if you own it physically or digitally, is nothing but a dead game that you paid money for. I didn't, thankfully, and I think the same could happen to Concord unless Sony rectifies these problems immediately. Let's start with IGN. This article is also written by Rebecca Valentine, the same lady who inadvertently started the whole Black Myth Wukong's devs are sexist narrative. So I already know writing this didn't fill her with joy either. It reads, Concord is estimated to have sold only 25,000 units. Here's why analysts think it's failing. I mean, it's pretty obvious why it's failing, don't you think? The game is dead on arrival. And it's full of DEI woke character designs and offers nothing new in a crowded genre, and decided that it was a good idea to put a price tag on all of this as well. When I keep saying that you should never launch a multiplayer only game behind a paywall, I mean come on guys, those days are over. If Overwatch and Destiny are free to play in order to survive, and they're like the big games of their niches within their genres, what hope did you expect when it came to Slop Cord and the Gender Warriors? Currently, as of the making of this video, Concord has a whopping 58 players on Steam right now. So if the game allegedly sold 10,000 copies on Steam, which I doubt because the max player counts never exceeded over 700 players at one time, this means that Concord has lost well over 90% of its player base within one week, and it pretty much barely had a player base to begin with. This game is, as they say, dead on arrival, fellas. IGN starts their article already being dumb where they say this. Plenty of games don't sell well at launch, but observers have latched onto Concord's dramatic failure due to its high-profile nature as a Sony first-party game. Plenty of games don't sell well at launch. Excuse me? What are you talking about? Because largely speaking, the release of any game is likely going to be the moment that they sell the most copies always, especially when it comes to AAA games. They always sell the majority of their copies right out of the gate. There are some games, of course, that get big boosts in the future, but this is usually because of DLC being released. Two good examples would be Phantom Liberty for Cyberpunk and Shadow of the Earth Tree for Elden Ring. Which, in Elden Ring's case, that DLC sold around 5 million in its opening week of release. Probably more now, too. But this sentiment that many games don't sell at launch can really only be true if you apply it to maybe obscure indie games that are made by one person or something that ends up growing over time. But Concord is a game that is made by alleged industry professionals who spent 8 years and over a hundred million dollars making a hero shooter with no interesting elements in it. So this statement is already kind of stupid, but this is IGN, so what do we expect really? And this is not surprising considering that last week Concord apparently removed the LGBTQ plus and political tags to the game on Steam as well. Which if nothing else, that tells you that what the agenda of this game was. That was it. The game was being made from the get-go to deliberately erase white people from the equation entirely. Considering that there are no white characters in the game at all, unless I guess if you consider Tio, but he's apparently South American or something, I don't know man, this game sucks. Other people have said that Lennox, or Lennox, however you say it, is the white guy character, but they made him also into a lizard guy. But that kind of just proves my point that this game and its devs, they went out of their way to ensure that there were no white male characters in it at all. But the fact that your game had political as a tag is crazy dude, like talk about the mask falling off, my god. And believe me, the only reason why they removed those tags in the first place was because they were quickly realizing that their game was not doing well and they tried to save face. 
But the agenda is already clear, and people are far more interested in watching this game from afar and seeing it crash and burn like a zeppelin into the ocean than actually playing the damn thing. Of course, IGN wanted to understand why Concord only sold around 25,000 units, so they interviewed a bunch of industry analysts in order to get answers. One of these analyst names are Liam Dean, a principal analyst from a company called Omdia, another is Matt Piscatella, and there's a few more. Anyway, there's a lot of analysts, so instead of quoting them all separately in their own individual wordings, It'll be far easier to just lump what all of these people said together into one big mega quote and then label them all as industry analysts. Does that work for everyone watching? Yes? Maybe? Well, that's how I'm gonna do it anyway, so these industry analysts who spoke to IGN said, and I quote, The Steam numbers are so bad that even without the exact data on the PS5 side, we can be pretty certain that the game is doing very badly. Concord ranked 147th in USA PS5 daily active players across all titles. With fewer than 0.2% of Monday's active PS5 players playing the game. But sadly, making a fun, high-quality shooter is not enough in the oversaturated live service space these days. While there has been trailers and some gameplay reveals for Concord, pre-launch promotion for the game appears to have been relatively limited, Concord lacks a pre-existing fanbase to bolster its launch. A tight-knit group of players might be willing to take a chance on a new game for free, but paying $40 is a big ask in today's macroeconomic climate. Launching Concord as a premium game limited its audience numbers and user acquisition. The more people who play a game, the more appealing it is. Network effects are crucial for building a healthy, engaged ecosystem. Concord should have launched free to play, or at least as part of the PlayStation Plus subscription to have a fighting chance in its overcrowded genre. It is not too late for this to happen, of course, but the damage might have already been done. First impressions matter. Since then, we've had a few more big budget hero shooters come to market, Apex Legends, Valorant, and Overwatch 2. Each with their own unique gameplay attributes, all three of these games are played by millions of gamers every month and dominate this category. Concord's gunplay compares most closely to Overwatch 2, and overall, the hero shooter market is already well served with a collection of very strong free-to-play titles. Live service games have a high failure rate. There are many reasons for that, but the main one is because they rely on network effects. Sometimes a single-player game can have a slow launch, but eventually find its way to success. But the clock is now ticking on Concord in a big way, because unless the player count picks up soon, there'll be nobody to play against. So even if you personally would like to give it a try, there'll be nothing to play, but while the risks are big, so are the rewards. It's no secret that many of the highest earning games in the market today are live service games. According to our data, only about 16% of the total revenue of the game's market now comes from traditional full game sales. Publishers are going to keep chasing that 84%. Though clearly they won't want any more Concord level disasters, if half of their forecoming slate of live service games over the next few years succeed, that won't be a bad result. It only takes one big live service win to generate billions upon billions in revenue and unlock new audiences. Two things PlayStation very much wants right now, as the console business is facing growth challenges and reaching saturation. That said, I also expect some resources to be redirected to strategies that are working better for the company, PC launches and cross-media transmedia. Pivoting to live service is high-risk, high-reward venture, and this risk is heightening to levels that might not be worth it for many AAA console PC publishers that aren't already active in the space. Sometimes everything that can go wrong does go wrong, although it's quite rare to see everything go this wrong." End quote. So it's clear as day that Concord has truly become one of the games of all time. It will go down in history as being yet another game that was made by people and sold for money and then eventually died. And yes, the joke here is that there is nothing remarkable about this game whatsoever in any regard. I mean, the fact that the analysts say everything that could go wrong did and Sony will have to learn from this is very telling, because I don't think Sony will learn much to be honest. This game, it has all the makings of being something that was okayed and pushed by their Los Angeles offices. Which makes complete sense considering that Los Angeles and California in general is a liberal hellhole of its own design. And like movies that have failed or TV that continues to push wokeness propaganda, 
The executives who live there in their gated communities while pushing for mass migration and no voter IDs? They probably took one look at Concord, saw no white male characters and a bunch of diverse women and went sold. Give them a hundred million dollar stat. This game was made for people who smell like cat piss and look like yesterday's lunch in the fridge. They are marketing these big games towards people that have no money and no sense of what even makes something good anymore. As long as it checks lists, they will like it apparently. But they will obviously won't buy it of course because communists have no money anyways. They just like the idea of something marketing at them existing. One YouTube channel recently had a great video that I think more of you should see, where a game designer sits down and goes through a bunch of Concord character designs and then rates them. And if you take a shot every time he says Nightmare when it comes to explaining a main character design in Concord, you will indeed die of alcohol poisoning before the video is even over. Because you know things are bad when character designers are looking at your cast and saying that those designs are literally unsalvageable. I wish I had a small robot sized fly that I could mosey into Firewalk Studios so I could maybe hear what's going on there right now. Because how the fresh hell did a bunch of game developers sit in a room looking at these designs and what they were offering and went, oh yeah, this will sell like hotcakes. Pretty much everything that could have gone wrong has with this game and there's nothing really salvageable when it comes to what this game has to offer. Sony's only real hope now is to make the game free to play across the board, and even then I would wager it still doesn't find a sustainable audience in the future. Because the reality is there's far better, more complete and unique free-to-play multiplayer experiences already on the market. I understand wanting to chase that big live service pie, but if you're going to go up against the titans of the genre, you need to bring your A game guys, come on. And Concord isn't even your B or C game, it's like a R or Y on the list of that, nobody is playing this game, man. I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually just unleash hordes of bots into the game to fill up the roster so that the remaining real life players can actually just keep playing. What's extra doom feeling is that Pirate Nation on Twitter said if you take all of the in game players right now on Steam for Concord and then you divide them into full teams, there's roughly only five full multiplayer matches being played right now on the entire PC platform. That is nuts, dude. Actually insane. But this is what happens, man. I keep telling you devs out there to stop making this slop. But no, you keep thinking that you'll be the ones to break the mold, and then you will all lose your jobs and then blame the players for the response. And speaking of blaming players, let's now shift to Dustborn, the game that nobody likes and the devs are really butthurt about that too. So Dustborn was made by Red Thread Games, a developer known for story-driven slop simulators in the past, they are also very angry that the response to their game has been nothing but negative. Here's what the studio said in a statement they released via Twitter, and I quote, To our community, since we first announced Dustborn, we've read your comments and listened to your feedback, hopes, and wishes for the game. Over the past four years, our team has poured their hearts to telling a story that's deeply meaningful to us. A story about the power of words, about building a world where everyone can feel safe about love, friendships, and robots, of course. We expected Dustborn to spark conversation and debate and looked forward to engaging with our players in a positive and constructive fashion. Unfortunately, that conversation has been drowned out by a tidal wave of hate and abuse. We welcome thoughtful feedback and respectful criticism. We embrace discussion and debate, but we have zero tolerance for hate speech, harassment, and threats of any kind. Those who engage in such behavior will be removed from our community. To everyone else, thank you for coming on this journey with us. Your support means everything and your constructive feedback continues to push us and learn and evolve. Together, let's continue building a world where everyone can feel valued and empowered to share their stories." End quote. This response, well, it didn't go over well, and they ended up getting clowned on like crazy, and yes, they locked their replies in their tweet as well, because that's how you know things aren't going very well for them. As one user whose name is Skuma said on Twitter, Bro, just DM them, and I mean, come on, man, 70k likes, god damn, dude. But they're right, somehow Dustborn is having even worse player counts than Concord, and Red Thread could have just sent this message to each player that's playing the game. What's funny is that more people like the post against Dustborn than there are people who actually bought the game to begin with. Another user named The Afterthought posted screenshots of actual in-game mechanics for Dustborn, like how bullying and canceling are effective ways of defeating your enemies. Those are real mechanics in the game, by the way. So how the hell are you going to be telling people who are against your game that bullying and canceling are not tolerated in your community 
when you advocate for every player that plays your slop game to do the same to the enemies within. You can't be serious, Red Thread. This reads like a clown wrote this. Even Kotaku tried to back up Dustborn and release an entire article saying that the hate that the game is getting is not warranted and it's being pushed by anti-woke right-leaning grifters. But like always, the Twitter users win because comedy always beats whatever social justice nonsense these morons are pushing. Another user responded to Kotaku named Rock Solid and said, Yeah, imagine running harassment campaigns against developers of a game. And then they posted a picture of an article that Kotaku wrote where they ran a harassment campaign against a developer who worked on Hogwarts Legacy. I covered that story over a year ago on the channel, and look, these replies are out of line, but they're right. You can't say that the hate and abuse that Dustborn is getting is a targeted harassment campaign, when you yourself have used the same tactics in the past to oust individuals working at studios that you want gone because they're conservatives. And look, I haven't played Dustborn, and I don't care if that means that my opinion is somehow invalidated because I haven't played it. Because you gotta be smoking some wild stuff if you think that I'll be paying real money for something that is so blatantly propaganda. For example, right, we all know this game exists and that it's woke as hell. But do any of you actually know what the plot of this game really is or what is actually happening in it? Because the actual in story is insane. And Kotaku paraphrases it here in their review of the game. And I mean, just listen to this and tell me if this sounds like something that you would want to pay money for. Kotaku said, and I quote, Dustborn starts out straightforward enough. Pax, her friend Sai, and her ex Gnome are all working with a man named Theo as an undercover punk band smuggling a data key across an alt future version of America. In this world, President John F. Kennedy wasn't the one killed in his 1963 assassination attempt. Instead, it was his wife Jackie Kennedy who lost her life, and in reaction to this loss, the president founded Justice, a policing force that descended into fascism, especially when targeting animals, or A-N-O-M-A-L-S, -A -A animals, I don't know, superpowered individuals who can affect different elements with their voice. For example, Pax can create negative feelings with her vocals, whereas Gnome can calm a heightened situation. The group has to make it across the country undetected in order to finish the job and reach a better life." End quote. So the game is about super-powered woke communists fighting against a regime founded by John F. Kennedy. I wish I was kidding, but that's the real plot that they have here. The idea of a world where Kennedy survived the attempt being the basis of a future cold world story, that could actually be very interesting if it were in more capable writers' hands. But unfortunately for us, it had to be Red Thread games that took this concept that could have been very interesting, and then they somehow injected woke activists who used their voices to sow discord instead. Like the fact that your main character's superpower is the ability to sow negative emotions into others using their voice, that's hilarious to me. How are you going to make a game where you play as actual grifters whose superpower is to grift? Like, you did that Red Thread games, we didn't. And then you're going to get mad that people negatively reacted to your game. Like, this is wild. It's hilarious. Don't get me wrong. This is stupid as it gets so far anyway. But it is impressive nonetheless. Soul. Soul makes you. He heals the soul. Uh, stay still for me, okay, champ? I'm sorry to have to Sounds like tokenism. This. What do you mean? I said stay still. No talking. Let's see I what. I have no time to hate. Because the grave would hinder me. And life was not so ample I could finish enmity. Nor had I time to love, but since some industry must be, the little toil of love, I thought, was large enough for me. Jesus, I hate that Feel any different? And begins poem 498 with the idea that she could not hate because she did not have enough time. This lack of time to hate occurs because life is too short. She is taking a cliche and transforming it into a revelation. Life is too precious to be filled with hatred. This game is literally hate incarnate. And he says, Jesus, I hate that shit. Oh my God. Oh, okay, okay. Let's dissect the meaning of this character. So this character can heal the world. 
He can heal wounds. He can heal gunshot. He can essentially prevent death. He cannot cure death, but he can prevent it. But it is based off of, for some reason, rhyme poetry or just poetry in general. So he chooses the words and he, like, nobody told him to recite Emily Dickinson. He could have just said, roses are red, violets are blue. I have a shotgun. I'm going to blow your brains out. He could have just done that, right? But he doesn't. So the writers gave a man powers to heal based off of something that he hates. This poem that they made him say is about saying that he has no time for hate, or I'm sorry, Emily Dickinson had no time for hate because life is too short. And he follows up quoting it with Jesus, I hate that sh also, in case you care, Kotaku pretty much spends the entire review bouncing between saying that Dustborn is crumbling under its own ambitions and failing to reach any cohesion between its many undercooked mechanics and then praising the game because it's diverse and full of identity politics. They pretty much say, yeah, we know this game sucks, but the message is what we agree with, so please buy it and no thanks, I'm good. What's also weird is that Dustborn won't be the last of these sorts of games. Niche Gamer said in their article titled, The US Government is Investing in Counter Disinformation Video Games. And yes, Dustborn is the kind of product world governments are trying to make more of because it allows them to push narratives and beliefs into entertainment that is meant to be consumed. Niche Gamer in their article even shares the actual document that this all stems from, which you can now see on screen now. As you can see, the total amount that is allocated for this is $275,000 meant to develop games designed to counter disinformation. By the way, Dustboard was made in the same way, but it was the European Union offering them a grant of $150,000 instead. Here's proof of that existing by the way, it's right here in the European Union's projects as you can see on screen now. Like, just reading this is so weird, man. Objective 1, target audiences have increased their ability to discern disinformation. Self-confidence in these abilities and motivation to share factual narratives. Outcome 1.1, members of the target audiences play the game to completion. Output 1.1.1, produced counter disinformation game consistent with funding requirements. So they are aware that people are becoming heavily resistant to disinformation and don't trust the fabricated narratives anymore. And their master plan, or one of them anyways, is to make games that change how you think into believing that the information you believe is true is actually fake, and what the government is telling you is actually what is real. If this isn't dystopian, I don't really know what is, dear viewer, but this is wild. So whenever these games fail, or as more of these disinformation games release, you can bet your sweet plum butt cheeks that I'll be there to sniff them out and present them for all to see. Whether it's woke games, movies, TV, or whatever else, we need to call these out for what they are, which is propaganda. None of this is okay. It will just make us all weaker as a people the more this stuff continues to exist. And no matter how much abuse they end up throwing my way, I will continue to let my nuts hang in their faces anyways. We can win this. Let's keep the pressure going. Thank you for watching, subscribe, and such. Thanks to my members and patrons. Enjoy your day, and I'll see you soon.